And gratitude, I think, is the hardest thing for people to learn. And so to watch a person with intellectual disabilities be so grateful every day was life-changing for me. You know, he just reveled in the things that he could do and the fun that he had and the camaraderie he had with his friends and, you know, was grateful that he could play basketball, grateful when he was with his cousins or his aunts or uncles or sisters or mother. And he was just one of the most happy human beings I've ever seen. And that's hard for mere mortals like us to be happy. You know, what does that even mean? There's like hundreds of thousands of books on Amazon, how to be happy in the moment. He just did it naturally. It came naturally to him. He didn't try. Welcome to the Gratitude Podcast on www.georgeandbenta.com, where you'll hear a new story each week that will inspire more gratitude in your own life. Our mission is to inspire 100,000 people to discover how to feel gratitude and live a happy life through the amazing life stories of our successful guests and their actionable tips. And now, the host of our podcast, George Benta. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today, with us, we have an entrepreneur, advocate, and published author, a man of action who has made it his life's mission to serve and benefit others. What he is trying to share with us, with the world, is an important message and um, an important life lesson from uh, his special needs son. TJ Nellingen, welcome to the Gratitude Podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. The pleasure is mine. Thank you for being here. So let us know a little bit more about you, about um, the story, uh, behind the book, how you got the idea, and we'll take it from there. Well, I spent 25 years in college sports marketing and media, the last 15 owning my own company with 40 some odd offices around the country, it was very driven type A personality. And when you're a type A personality, it's pretty hard to find gratitude because you always have another goal, another stop in life, along the road that you want to get to and you tell yourself when I get to this position I'm going to be happy and grateful when I get to this many employees and the company's doing x amount in revenue then I'll be grateful and then I'll be happy and I had a special needs son who was born in 1990 and the first five to ten years are very difficult as parents of special needs children know because you spend all your time going to doctors medications, physical therapy, speech therapy. And it takes you on a winding road that is very hard on the parents emotionally, physically. And then one day, all of a sudden, Sean, as he became a teenager, we used to call him the mayor. He'd walk in any room like he owned it, like he was a superstar <laughs> in sports or a, or a professional actor. And he just was so happy and he had so much gratitude, which was very confusing to me because I'm sure anyone that would look at Sean that didn't know him would say, what does he have to be grateful about? Why is he happy? And yet he went through each day not knowing what he could not accomplish or couldn't do. He was happy with his accomplishments. And so at one point I realized, you know, those shattered dreams were not Sean's dreams. He seems perfectly happy to be alive. He's the happiest kid I've ever seen. Every day he'd hop out of bed and say, it's going to be a great day. And so he couldn't ride a two-wheel bike, so we got him a three-wheel bike. He would shoot baskets and love sports for hours out in the driveway and became very good at it. And he just exemplified what a happy life is, is to be grateful for today, to live in the present moment, which is another difficult thing for type A personalities or anyone for that matter is to live in the present. This present moment is all you have. You don't know what you have going forward. And so to watch him one-on-one -on -one communicate and be present in that person's life for that time and always remembering everybody's name and giving his trademark big bear hugs was such a joy to see that it actually changes your life when you see that and you realize growing up, we thought, my daughter's more and Megan and Sean's mom, Maggie, thought we had to teach Sean about life and protect him, both physically and emotionally, in case people would say mean things to him, which never really happened, thank God for us. 
Uh, but then there comes a day where you realize this young man taught us more about life and the lessons we should all learn in life than we could have ever taught him. That's amazing. That's amazing. And do you believe that it uh, it's in part uh, due to your uh, support, to your, your love, to your affection, or do you feel like uh, it was his gift to the world? I think it was both, but I think it was his gift to the world that he was such a kind soul. My daughters, Maura and Megan, would call him the angel on earth. He just always <laughs> had a perpetual smile. He was always happy. But I also think that we took him everywhere. He went to sporting events, Final Fours, Super Bowls, Big East Conference, basketball tournaments with me all the time. And if somebody didn't like that or they felt like he was weird or, you know, they made him uncomfortable, well, then – Sean did not come. That person gets cut out of the equation. And so I think Sean taught us what unconditional love really means. I mean, you could be standing in uh, a reception before a, a sporting event, and he would decide, this is the time that I need to hug my dad. And he'd hug you and not let go for a minute or two. And some people would look like, what's that? And it just gave you the best feeling that you knew this young man was showing what unconditional love is really about, and we should learn from that. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. And I think it's, uh, like you said, it teaches us a very valuable lesson of um, being able to be present and to enjoy the moment and to do what you feel in that moment. That's that's very beautiful. And when when I think about... Uh, th that moment that you just described is it's if you feel like showing appreciation to someone you just do it <laughs> right right exactly and and you know he met many famous athletes because we happen to work in sports but yet one of my favorite stories was his first day of work when he was probably about 19 years old or so his mom dropped him off he came up And he and his best friend who played on some Special Olympic sports teams, basketball and soccer and others, were doing our accounts receivable. So they put the envelopes in, they put the stamp on, and they mail away all the accounts receivable for us and took such pride in their work. They're probably our two best employees. Well, at the end of his first day, we go downstairs to leave the building, and the security guy slash doorman is sitting there, and Sean walks right up to him. And high fives him and goes, okay, Bruno. I'll, <clears throat> okay, Bruno, I'll see you next week. <laughs> and he says, and say hi to your granddaughters. Now, I've walked past this man for 10 years. Maybe gave him a little wave, a little hello, good morning. I didn't know his name. Sean worked there one day, and he knew the man's name, and he knew something about him. He knew that he had two granddaughters. So I get in the car mm -hmm. all confused. I'm like, Sean, how do you know Bruno's name? Oh, I met him this morning when I came in. I told him it was my first day of work, and I was very happy to meet him. And it teaches you a lesson because then he'll meet famous athletes or, you know, famous celebrities, and he treats them exactly the same. He didn't treat a senator he met or Eli Manning or Derek Jeter any different than he would treat Bruno, the doorman at my office building, because if they were kind to him and showed respect, he showed that same kindness and respect back back in fact he was the proactive one to initiate these relationships and the people knew it was coming from a place of kindness authenticity and it was genuine so they welcomed it wow that's amazing that's amazing <laughs> so so many life lessons um that can be learned from such wonderful soul and such a wonderful person and yeah i think it's it's amazing uh was it always the same like you you mentioned that in the beginning it was uh really hard for you and um it, it wasn't something really easy like it is right now to, to show so much appreciation for sean and for uh, what he brought in your life well i think it's very difficult the first five to ten years for any parent because Initially, you're, you're shocked, you know, you're saddened, you're grieving from the, quote, normal child you thought you were entitled to, like everybody out there. 
And then you go on a winding journey where you're doing nothing but being proactive to take them to the proper doctors, find the right schools, be their advocate for education in the first 10 years, but also figuring out where do they fit in? What do they need to maximize their potential? And it's a long road and it takes a while. It's not easy, but you know, for other parents out there, you got to keep the faith because there does come a day when you look at this same child and realize I don't see the disabilities anymore. I only see what they can do and what they can achieve. And, you know, I've always said that inspiration can come from the most unlikely places. I mean, who thought that Sean would have a book? And this is Sean's book. I'm just the messenger. I'm telling the message of Sean and all the other amazing Special Olympics athletes and other special needs, young men and young women who have touched my life over the years at his schools as well. He was lucky to be involved in two special needs schools that maximized his ability you know, taught him more than I ever thought he could learn. And I, and I know to this day that he always knew more than we thought he did. You know, he would go to sporting events and he loved sports so much and had such a passion for sports. And he couldn't do mathematics and he couldn't read, yet he knew the logos of every team and he knew which team was winning. And I still have no idea how this happened. I call it sports math in the book that he knew if the Giants are winning seven to nothing, we score another touchdown, we're going to be winning 14 nothing, Dad. And I'd look at him amazed to say, what's seven plus seven? I don't know. But I know two touchdowns is 14. So it was amazing <laughs> how the brain works. And if you have a passion for something, that you can work on that passion and maximize your abilities. That's so true. That's so true. And uh, I think it it's something that we can all think about. Like, even if we are not great at, at certain things if certain things aren't working great in our life that doesn't mean that we can't be really good in in other ones and appreciate the fact that we we have those gifts and uh, like in sean's case <laughs> actually um being in the family of someone that uh, um, appreciates these kinds of things very much and that i think that's that's wonderful Yeah, it was amazing to watch him interact with people. All of his teammates, he was like the head cheerleader. You know, he was pretty good at basketball. He didn't really like soccer, but he played it because his teammates were there. And he'd be the first one to high-five them or cheer for them. And if they lost, he said, okay, we'll win next time. And he'd give every one of his teammates a hug before he left. And that's what he liked. He liked the camaraderie, the friendship, you know, that unconditional love he had not only for his family, and his relatives, but his teammates as well. And he just loved going to those events because it gave him the opportunity that all of us had growing up, which is to have all these friends and to be involved in something where you have a common interest and a common goal. Yeah, I think sports are amazing, uh, for, especially from this point of view, the fact that you have uh, other people there, brothers and sisters and people who are on the same team and working towards the same goal and uh, helping each other and being there when when uh, someone falls it's it's a beautiful feeling and um, yeah I think it's definitely something uh, that the people that have experienced this uh, can can think about and can be grateful about <clears throat> And uh, I also wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, how how you were able to um, to accept uh, losing Sean and uh, being able to to not just accept it but to uh, to show your appreciation for him and for what uh, he he brought in your life even after he passed well it's still a struggle every day i don't think you ever get over losing a child because it's not the natural way life should work and i've met so many people that reached out to me who are in this club as they call it it's a club that you never wish anyone would have to join yeah. but you know i realized that part of me died with sean that day but part of him is inside me forever and as i sat down to write his eulogy I just started writing all these funny stories and anecdotes and, and things about Sean 
and I realized there was a recurring theme and it kept coming up with different things that he was so happy. He was such a good friend. He was an inspiration to so many. <clears throat> and I came up with the term, live like Sean. Not, not when it's easy, not when it's convenient, but every day. So as I gave his eulogy and his sister spoke and his mom spoke, after it was over, my friend came up to me who's written some books and he said, that was amazing. That's the title of your book. You just gave the outline to a great book that so many people will benefit from, uh, especially people with special needs children. And he said, Live Like Sean is your book. And next thing I knew, I was writing a book, which I had no intention to do. And I figured, ah, you know what? I wrote it because I wanted to remember all the great stories about Sean when I'm 20 years older or 30 years older and not forget. So I figured, well, at best I have it. We'll make a copy for his cousins and teammates and coaches, and that'll be that. And then all of a sudden it took on a life of its own. Now it's out there everywhere. Um, everybody's talking about it. I've gotten so many emails and texts from people saying that you captured the emotions of our family when we went through all of that. And emails from people that said, this book is going to help so many people because it's Sean's book. And so this is really Sean's legacy that he's always inspired others to take action like me and thousands of others who did many things for Special Olympics and the Special Olympics USA games we hosted in New Jersey and his schools. Um, but it's just, it's amazing to read the comments that all of these people have about Sean. And that was the hardest part for me to read was his cousins and aunts and uncles writing letters in the back of the book. They all had sent me letters and we decided to put them in the book. And those are the hardest to read because I realized I knew how amazing Sean was. His sisters and his mother knew how amazing a human being he was. But then you realize he had that effect on everyone, you know, and that effect is, is, you know, huge. He's just affected so many people in such a great way that this book will now be his legacy forever to help so many other people. And, you know, it's his message. And it is an amazing message of kindness, of inspiration. And he was probably the best human being I've ever known. It's amazing. And yeah, in in what you did, basically, f from my point of view, it's a, it's a beautiful gesture of appreciation and um, writing the book, uh, being on podcasts, um, talking about the book and talking about Sean and uh, just the fact that uh, you found so many amazing things about him. I think it's 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 part of his legacy as well like i know that you you mentioned that uh he basically taught you how to feel grateful and i think this is actually uh a way in which you actually acted on that gratitude and i i think that's that's amazing and it's very inspiring well i appreciate that but it's it's almost like the message is coming you know, from Sean through me to reach so many people that he can't reach in person anymore, but he can reach them through his spirit, through his love for them and through, you know, people getting a chance to get to know him better through this book. And it wasn't easy to write at times. Um, but I think at the end of the day, his message will live on forever and that'll be his legacy. And gratitude, I think, is the hardest thing for people to learn. And so to watch a person with intellectual disabilities be so grateful every day was life-changing for me. You know, he just reveled in the things that he could do and the fun that he had and the camaraderie he had with his friends and, you know, was grateful that he could play basketball, grateful when he was with his cousins or his aunts or uncles or sisters or mother. And he was just one of the most happy human beings I've ever seen. And that's hard for mere mortals like us to be happy you know what does that even mean there's like hundreds of thousands of books on amazon how to be happy in the moment he just did it naturally it came naturally to him he didn't try you know he didn't have a therapist or a guru telling him how to be happy and how to have gratitude and oprah tell him to write a gratitude journal he just did it every day by himself and it was an amazing process to watch and i think many people benefited from his leadership in that way 
Yeah, and I think it's actually the best way to learn to have um, the inspiration of such a person uh, seeing the fact that they are grateful, they are happy. It it makes you see the world differently. It makes you see that it's possible for you as well to to be grateful, to be happy. And um, yeah, leading by example, like you said, uh, that's that's perfect. That's um, the best way for us to to actually uh, internalize something. And that's amazing that uh, he was able to do it. Yeah, it's been a truly amazing journey to go on, especially after writing this book and seeing, you know, the outpouring of support and love for Sean from so many people. And I think that is his legacy. His legacy is he's taught so many people how to be kind, how to be a friend, how to be grateful. And um, I hope that his legacy in this book can help so many people. Yeah, I I think it it already is inspiring many people and i'm sure that our our listeners are as well inspired by just hearing you talk about sean and about the amazing things that um he was able to do uh, and in the, the amazing impact he had on on so many people and i know that uh actually today as we are recording um the the book will be available throughout, throughout the U.S., right? Yeah, the book is available throughout the country. You can go to tjnelligan.com, N-E-L-L-I-G-A-N, tjnelligan.com. And we also have a Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, TJ Nelligan, to learn more about Sean. And uh, the book is available anywhere bookstores are sold today, which is which is amazing. So I appreciate being on with you on the day the book actually is in the bookstores. Yeah, that's amazing. It, it's been a real pleasure getting to know you and getting to know Sean through you. And I'm sure that our listeners will enjoy uh, listening to this episode and also reading the book. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure. As it is with gratitude, when you feel abundant, you want all the people you care about to experience it too. So, my dear gratitude seeker, if you haven't done so already, go to georgianbenta.com slash free week and you'll get access to the first week of the How to Experience Abundance Through Gratitude course for free. That's right, for free. I believe there's always room for more gratitude and abundance in our life, so let this year be your year of prosperity and appreciation. Are you with me? Let's go from lack to lucky in one week. Just visit georgianbenta.com slash free week or tap the link in the description.